<laughs> well, we're going to start. And what I'm going to do is do something in the beginning anyways. Let me just share this on Twitter real quick. Hartman and a little bit about the supposed conflicting statements from Stephen. So I'll explain more in a minute. Sam William Henry Bobby too. The bones they were planted, the bullet yeah planted. I'll explain what that means in a second. It's about a video that was suggested to me last night. Yeah, Stacy's great. Mr. Seabrook is uh, quite a talented man. So, hi, Joy. Inspector Clouseau, yeah. I, I thought that would be fun for today. Hello. How are you? So, hello, Kathy. Hello, Lori. Hello, Bo. Miss Fallon. Uh, Justin, hello. Michelle, hello. Rain, hello. Hello, Mal. So, I actually in, it, it, it always intended to start this video probably what would have been about five or ten minutes ago. <laughs> For me, that would be eight o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Um, but for some reason, when I was entering the schedule, I, I, my mouse must have drifted and clicked on nine. So, in order to give people a chance to get here, you know, who originally saw that it was going to be an hour later, uh, I figured we could uh, talk about some, maybe a few other things before I get into what I was going to talk about. <laughs> Hello, Tracy. Hello, Kate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, to me, it's just funny, really. It's it's just kind of comical. Um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. I actually thought this might be a good chance for me to, to, to talk to you guys about some of the things uh, that, you know, you would want to see here in the future. So, I know that, like, <laughs> the, the, the studio fridge is stocked with Stella's today, by the way. Um, so I was thinking, you know, obviously there was, there was a suggestion made that Dave Bagaka and I could do a video where we talk and do a call kind of similar, like what I did with Mark and Paul on the international call. Um, and, and actually Dave and I have talked about that a few times. We've just never actually ended up, you know, making it happen. So, um, that's definitely something we can do. I was going to make a coffee. Sip. <laughs> well, I'm 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 hoping to go till ten, so it's I'm 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 kind of tentatively planning to go for two hours here, so we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. Um, hello, oh hey Matt D from Australia. <laughs> so 
Um, yeah. So Dave was was one of the uh, one of the things that 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 was uh, brought up, and and so I was just you know kind of thinking to get your guys' ideas like what parts of this case right now, particularly the new people, the people that just watch MAM two and just came back to this and stuff. What in particular is it you're looking for, or you're interested in, or intrigued about? Because I mainly want to be able to get people, you know, the information that that they're kind of looking to, you know. That's why I've been kind of trying to keep my topics about things that people were asking about the previous night in the chat. So I've been kind of trying to do that so that I'm hitting the subjects that people are currently interested in. It won't last long here on the East Coast. Well, you know, you can hang around as long as you can hang around. <laughs> Man, the chapstick, we gotta look into that. <laughs> the whole chapstick thing, yeah, my 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 friend Paul is is uh also Mr. Capaldi is also uh like very keen on the chapstick. Hello Jerome. Uh what I'm looking for is what is a realistic timeline for Zellner to get a new trial? Okay, well the realistic timeline well, it's hard to say, first off. It's hard I mean it's just hard to pin that down, but it's gonna be at least it at least we're going to be waiting until like May or June of 2019. And the reason why that is, is because like I said, Zelda is going to be filing, uh, uh, making a filing with the uh, appeals court on December 20th. And on December 20th, when she files that, the state will then have a certain number of days. I believe it's something like 30 days or 25 or 30 days that they will have. And they can ask for an extension if they want, if they need more time. Uh, so that's going to take it into probably around February ish or, or even maybe March. Uh, and, and, and so then after they file, then Zellner gets to reply to their, when they, when they respond, Zellner then gets to reply to that response. Uh, and she has, it's something like, I think 15 or 20, 15 to 20 days to file her reply after the state responds. So this is all going to put it all out into like, you know, like May and June of 2019. And then at that point, we don't know what the appeal court will really do. They may go ahead and make it, you know, take and take the case and, you know, with them and, and decide on it as is with the written briefs, or they may call for oral arguments because they want to hear more about it and, you know, or want to have more explanation about it basically and that sort of stuff. So they may call for oral arguments. If they call for oral arguments, that'll get scheduled. Then we have to wait for those to happen, which will probably, it, it probably won't happen quickly. Um, it'll probably get scheduled for sometime in like September or something like that. And then the oral arguments would happen. And then the, the judges would, after the oral arguments, take the case. And then within, it's hard to say, but generally within three to six months, a decision comes out it's that's kind of what the process is like so i hope that helps but that is what ha that's how it goes trust me i've been following along with brendan's for the last two and a half years and and this is how this is how it went with with him in federal court now from what i understand they do not generally do a whole lot of oral arguments at the appeals court at the state level um it just so happens that that the state appeals courts just don't you don't often do that just uh tidbit for for you to consider hello 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 <laughs> uh, but that's just a tidbit for you to consider there so um but that that's the approximate timeline and it's and and and, and it's only possible to give you an approximate timeline that's i mean nobody can give you a you know this is how it's gonna do boom 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 and bullet point it for you it's just it's it's malleable it's you know like i said extensions can be asked for and that sort of stuff so, um, that's, that's what the process is. So, Ottawa, hello, Justin. Yeah, no problem, Rain. Um, I think they'll reject it again and she'll do, well, I, well, I don't know. The appeals court so far hasn't rejected anything. Uh, in fact, the appeals court did after the CD was handed over, the appeals court did, you know, specifically ask for it to be sent back down to the district court um, and, and and whatever, you know, like it was. And then Judge Sukowitz denied it again, so now they're back at the appeals court again. So it's going to be interesting, actually, to see what the appeals court thinks about this because 
I think they sent it down expecting an evidentiary hearing to happen to where they were going to to where when it came back to them they were going to have a kind of a wealth of information that they were going to be able to you know look through and and to you know whatever I, I'm wondering if they're going to be very amused with the fact that literally nothing came in um Judge Sukowitz even denied that the state's response was was she never asked for it and so she doesn't even know why they were like responding. It was it was her, Judge Sukowitz's decision was kind of odd and strange. So I don't know exactly how the appeals court is going to feel about how that went. I'm actually intrigued to find out. I think they rejected again. Okay, uh, I've read all the files, but I think for a new watcher, explaining again the connections to earlier case would help with context. Yeah, the, oh, you mean with the, how the Penny Burnson case and how. That all led into what happened. Yeah, I can certainly do that, and 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 it is a good topic. It's one I feel like MAM covers pretty well, so I usually shy away from trying to cover something so redundant. I think, but it, it it's worth doing once. <laughs> yeah, I've gone through all the documents, and you know. Do you th uh, let's see, Marissa, let's see, no, duck. Do you think they should have tested the turn signal lamp, fingerprints, DNA, since the true killer had gloves? Well, yeah, they probably should have, but they, I mean, if they didn't, the whole reason they didn't is because they weren't looking to turn over any rocks that would point somewhere besides Stephen Avery. Um, that's just my feeling on it. They, they were, they were deliberately avoiding investigating things because they just didn't want to they didn't want to rock the boat yeah if you do a video about how it's some of the same people in both cases yeah certainly I, you know actually that'd probably be a good one when i talk about when i talk to dave if you know when i get together with dave um him and i can probably do that video very well because dave was there dave can give you guys some of the first-hand account dave can i mean he lived there at the time uh, there's a lot Dave could bring to that conversation. So uh, maybe that's what I'll do with Dave. Uh, it's like she's the fourth most... Re it's like she she's like the fourth most requested judge to be substituted. <laughs> yeah, right, I know. And and I, was it the fourth most? I thought it was the most. And like she was like... Or, you know, like she was like... Her and the four people that... Her and the four judges that are in the top four are like like just of way 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 away from the next judge below them number five like judge five has a lot less um requests for that than they do it's funny what's the sicky key letter all about the sicky key letter is a letter that basically it's 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 written very poorly it's it's the grammar's horrible the um the writing itself is is barely legible and uh but it basically suggests that Teresa's body was burned in the smelter and and that has been that has come to be understood to be the smelter where Scott Taddock worked at that time and what what's what's coming out now and what Zellner's saying is that the whole thing is is Sikiki was just the poor penmanship and poor language skills of the foundry worker that was writing it because as they've found out since that pretty much 90 percent of the people that work at the foundry are illiterate and they don't really read and write very well so that would explain a lot of the things about the sikiki letter and what sikiki is actually supposed to be but the penmanship is just really bad it's supposed to be skinny and skinny would have been scott taddock's nickname back then at the time at the foundry the, the other guys at the foundry called him skinny um, and that was his nickname. So that's basically what the sicky key letter is. It just suggests that Teresa was burned in a smelter over there. Um, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, has anyone read Kiss the Girls and see if there's anything like what Brendan said? Uh, some people have, and there is, there's scenes in there that are like, that are like some of the things that Brendan described. I mean, but you got to imagine, Brendan wasn't just thinking about something like Kiss the Girls. He was thinking about any kind of experience he could because he was floundering. He wasn't worldly enough 
to be able to give these these officers the kind of answers they wanted him to generate. He just wasn't worldly enough to do it. And so he was trying to draw on any movie, anything, you know, anything that he that he could think he saw or whatever back, you know, so that he could try it with these officers and see if it would float. You know, and cuz he was floundering all the time. That's, you know, I mean, yeah, he was guessing and and there's no doubt of that in my mind really. Uh, those Smith, he's full of lies. Can't keep them straight. Uh, what's up with the rag they found? I just read that in Kim's group. Well, that was something that we all got. You know, we all didn't like Wendy Baldwin. We all just couldn't stand her. She is a, um, a female officer that worked over at uh, Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department. She's basically the only female officer involved in the case. But um, beyond that, she is... She was she was the one that you hear in the video when that when you hear um, in M A M when you hear uh, her going through Stephen's trailer you can hear her talking on the video that's Wendy Baldwin the you know the part when she says oh I bet if we I bet if we take these shoes we could probably solve half the crimes in Manitowoc right that was the joke she made while she was you know filming going through so that is Wendy Baldwin Wendy Baldwin at one point found a bloody rag at the yard that had some of Steven's blood on it. And she was like carrying it around. It, it's it's very bizarre. Uh, extremely bizarre. So. Yeah. Let's see here. I tried to get the audiobook, But it was unavailable. Uh, majority. To my knowledge. Majority of what Brendan said. Was based off the movie rather than the book. Yeah I think so. And I think it was mixed in with all kinds of other things from pop culture that he thought that, you know, pop culture is filled with all kinds of gruesome images. So he could have been pulling from that and from many, any other thing that he saw on TV. Those files have been sealed, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, why do you think this happened to Avery? Uh, well, oh, well, uh, it's obvious that the motivation here for Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department to frame Stephen Avery is because he had a $36 million lawsuit that was hanging over their heads and the insurance company that usually normally covers the Sheriff's Department in case of these sort of things said they weren't going to be covering because the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department had so clearly screwed up that they weren't going to cover it. And that's when, that's when Stephen was in a position of strength. But then... When they were able to knock Stephen down and put this charge on him and and do all those things, suddenly the the insurance company you know started working with the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department, decided they would go ahead and cover it um, because it was going to get settled for a lot less than it was. I mean, it was just so so ridiculous and so shady. Um, but that yeah, that's that's the kind of things that were going on, and that was the motive for. Uh, and even for the state, for Peg Lautenschlager, um, and people's people people sometimes will say, "But oh yeah, but the state." I mean, come on, yeah, the state. Okay, Stephen was a poster child for wrongful convictions. He was about to be the Pied Piper that was about to march, start marching out a bunch of innocent prison, prisoners out of prison. And Peg Lautenschlager saw her Department of Justice going bankrupt, and she was not going to have that. You want the proof? The proof is when she says, after investigating, after the investigation into everything that happened to Stephen by the state, she comes off saying, "Oh, it it was it was no wrongdoing. It was just a breakdown of communication between agencies." And that's it, whitewashed, just like that, right? And so now you got Avery appearing on TV with Jim Doyle, the governor, and becoming the poster child, and she knows the writing on the wall. With, with what's happening and it's gonna it was it was gonna bankrupt her her Department of Justice which she was in charge of and so she sought to stop it she wanted it to stop as well and you know I you know the, she I'll put it this way even if she, if she wasn't involved in it I'll guarantee you this if she under if she caught any wind that it might have been happening she sure as hell wouldn't have cared or done anything about it I'm sure of that
common misconception is that everybody had to be corrupt. It only takes a couple. I, I truly believe it is just that. In fact, I believe Tom Fassbender acted as Peg's arm. You know, I think Tom Fassbender acted like Peg's kind of her general. Um, he was there looking after the Department of Justice's interests. And, and I believe there was a handful of MTSO officers, Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department. I believe there's a very small handful of them who were helping the evidence along. And then the Calumet officers were just coming along and finding it, finding, you know, evidence and, and, you know, and, you know, turning it, you know, doing whatever. Or they were just accepting the evidence that, that was popping up, even though it was almost always found by a Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department officer. Um, but I, I also believe that it's, it's a limited number of people uh, that were doing this. The rest of the people, even if they suspected, didn't care. And they weren't going to ask any questions either. So that's that's how this happens. Um, a friend of mine, Mark Audi, uh, great guy. Uh, he, he's from he's from the UK, and he, he he one day when I was trying to explain this thought that I was having, <laughs> he he put it very well where he said he said basically with law enforcement, all compasses point north, and that's exactly it. They all think alike. They all have the same you know, tendencies and, and tend to think along the same lines and tend to, you know, so they're all in line and headed in the same direction. So all compasses point north. So like I said, even if anybody suspected that there might've been something shady, they were more likely to just shut up and not say anything about it. Uh, MAM2 mentioned Steve quit school. Let me see here. Jersey things. I'll start doing it. Okay. Uh, mentions that Steve quit school to take care of the business. Uh, when Pop was injured, the target of Avery goes back to when it was something related to his parents. Targeting of Avery goes. Yeah. Well, you know, apparently Stephen was a bit of a troublemaker, you know. And, and the Manitowoc County Law Enforcement, or, you know, the Sheriff's Department there, they just. They they got it. They had it in for him, and they let it get out of hand. They they didn't. They needed. They should have. They should have. You know, pulled back before it ever got like it did. But you know, when they nail the killer, a lot of people are gonna claim he was so smart. He wasn't at all. He tried framing the poster child of framing. <laughs> right? I mean, Stephen. That's part of why I wanted to make this video tonight. Is that. When it comes down to it, what I've heard out of Stephen's mouth in news interviews and and whatever I've what I've heard out of Stephen's mouth has always been the same. The only the only statements that are different than than what Stephen normally says than what I've seen you know basically what I've always seen Stephen say, the only accounts that are different are the accounts that come through Manitowoc County sheriffs or you know others but but none of these none of these accounts where Stephen supposedly has these changing stories none of them come from Stephen directly himself so I, I, I find that interesting so let's yeah yeah let's say goodbye to Sh Walker and Schimmel um, you know Walker had a chance to see which way the wind was blowing you know he could have he could have decided that that maybe criminal justice reform was something that was, you know, that, that had merit and he could have, you know, changed his, his way of governing, but he's too stuck in his ways. So I, you know, he's got to go, he's got to go. So it went from 1.2 million to 36 million after they found out about the 95 call to the MTSO that Colburn reported once Avery was released. Right. Fackbender and Colburn. Has anyone noticed how those, the suspected guilty parties involved all day? I believe so in answer. Has anyone noticed how the suspected guilty parties involved all day? I believe so when answering. Um, it gets under my skin. Oh, how they say I believe so, right. Or or I can't recall is another one they like to use. Um, heard about it and then researched. 
Yes, exposing the crime lab would have been a disaster, and it will be. <laughs> I can't help but wonder how many other people in Wisconsin are innocent, considering how far the AG and the crime labs are willing to go. Yeah, you know, that's, I mean, that's a very good concern because we know that, that well, I know that at the time when Stephen was getting out of prison, that that when he was getting out of prison, there was 900 other prisoners in Wisconsin that had, that were, that were, you know, uh, appealing to the, the Innocence Project and getting, trying to get the Innocence Project to look into their cases. Now, would all 900 of them have been exonerated? Hell no. Uh, probably even a large part of those 900 were actually guilty prisoners just trying to take a shot at getting out. Right? But, I'm sure of that 900, let's say if only 40 out of 900 get exonerated, okay? You understand what 40 people coming out of prison wanting millions or a million or two million or in Stephen's case, maybe 36. So you understand that, that that's a problem, right, for the DOJ because they have to pay it. So how are they how are they going to do that if, 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 if Stephen coming out and being exonerated was going to open up the floodgates for a lot more. And they didn't even know how they were going to pay Steven. Right? So that's where, I mean, it's obvious that that's where this, where all this comes from. When somebody talks to, talks plain like Steven, it's easy, uh, it's easy to claim they're saying something they're not. Easy to twist his words and make it sound like a changing story. Yeah, that's also true. Um... I know pe several people who are released after years of life sentences because of doctors lying while testifying. Yeah, that and forensic experts lying or fudging the science, uh, hiding results, uh, various things. Yeah, I have to step out shortly. Okay. <laughs> Get busy. Tell us about Lynn. Okay, fine. I'll tell you about Lynn real quick. Okay, so what Lynn did... What I saw today was a post she had made and she was basically calling for she was basically calling for everybody to to uh, start contacting the Illinois Bar Association to get Zellner disbarred. Um I mean I just I just found it so hilarious. It's like are you kidding me? You think the Illinois you mean the Illinois Bar is going to disbar her? You know, I mean just because the thing that kills me about Lynn, you know, is is none of us asked for her to to insert herself in this, but she did. She inserted herself. She corresponded with Steve. She decided that she wanted to get married with a prisoner. I mean, these are all decisions Lynn made. Um, she was she was married to a cop, actually, according to TikTok Manitowoc on Twitter still is married to that cop. So even bigger head scratcher as to why she would be marrying Steven. But put that aside. But we none of us ever asked for her to insert herself into all this. But most of us were just like, okay, well, you know, just, you know, accept her, whatever. We, you know, tried to be helpful with her and, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> as best we could we didn't have any, you know we, we were just we were cool to her but the thing is is that when she eventually then decided to do Dr. Phil when she decided to do Dr. Phil that was kind of basically her proving she really didn't care about Steven because she wasn't supposed to do that she wasn't supposed to go on Dr. Phil that wasn't I mean and, and the fact that she did it for I think it was something like five grand uh, is what she got for going on Dr. Phil. And because she did that, she proved she didn't really care about Steven. And then Dr. Phil gets inside of her head and starts making her think about her decisions that she's been making and that sort of stuff, which she'd been making some pretty not really very well-informed decisions. I think we can all agree. Right? So... Dr. Phil gets her thinking and she then obviously thinks, oh no, yeah, I'm, I've, I've, I, this, what I did was wrong. Instead of just stepping away 
and and just you know getting away from it because it was embarrassing or whatever she then decides she's going to run to the arms of the guilters the people that think that Steven's guilty and now she's a guilter and and that's fine i mean i have no quarrel with that but for me there's a pattern with lynn she has a pattern she was was slash is married to a police officer long time well a long time law enforcement official officer basically Starts corresponding with Steven, decides she's going to marry Steven, goes on Dr. Phil, gets embarrassed, and then suddenly becomes a Steven hater. For me, it's like, I'm reminded of a Motley Crue song. And this is what I would, this is what I have to say to Lynn. Girl, don't go away mad. Girl, just go away. And, and that's basically sums it up. And that's what Lynn did, and that sums up basically how I feel about it. So, I have to say, Stephen has idea of what a good woman is. Well, you know, in Stephen's defense, Stephen's a prisoner in jail. Total sausage party, right? Total sausage fest. So it's not like he has a whole lot of, you know, so... I don't know. I, it, it's it's hard for me to it's hard for me to criticize Stephen's decisions. He's in a place where he doesn't have much variety or cho- choice or you know control over much of anything really. She seems sketchy. <laughs> Sausage fest. Yes. Uh, she's she was sent to Doctor Phil to further the character assassination. Well, yeah, and you know whatever it may be. Obviously, it seems like she did have an agenda. So, um, like I said, if she cared about Steven, she would have never been going on Dr. Phil in the first place, right? If she cared about Steven, she wouldn't have been doing that because Steven had informed her that you can't talk to the press, you can't go, and, and certainly you can't go on Dr. Phil. So, you know, and so she did that, and then Dr. Phil starts getting in her head, and then Steven calls in, and, you know, it's just it was just a train wreck. Yeah. Yeah, I you know, it was it was just like I said, it was just I mean, Lynn made some bad decisions. Lynn Hartman made some bad decisions. Um she she made just some really bad decisions. And and I just wish she could have just owned those bad decisions instead of instead of, you know, becoming instead of becoming, you know, this this hater of Steven. But maybe that's what she was all along. Who knows? It's hard to say. He has spent most of his life in prison. How can he know what a good... Right. I mean, the, I mean, Stephen has had no, really, almost virtually no time to develop any kind of, you know, sophistication or, um, you know, emotional uh, quotient or, you know, EQ. He, when it comes to women in relationships, he's had very limited experience because all but four or five years of his adult life have been spent in prison. So, yeah, it's not like Stephen's going to be the most sophisticated, you know, romantic in the world. It, you know, or, or or even, you know, make the right choices in, in, in women, as it is. Five years out of your adult life is not a whole lot. And I know five... I know... Uh, when I was 23 years old, I was making all kinds of dumbass decisions and dumbass mistakes and being a freaking moron, right? So, I mean, yeah. Did Steven know he was going to be on the phone with Dr. Phil? He has to call in to Dr. Phil. So, yeah, they got a message to him somehow, and obviously once he realized what was happening, he called in. So, she got engaged to a man while still legally married. Apparently so. That's what I'm hearing. Is that she is actually still married to that law enforcement officer? Is what I'm hearing. Wendy worked at Queso. Remember, she was on the pl- she was also on the plane with Poggle. That's true. That is true. Um, I don't think so much. Lynn needs to be ignored. And basically, I've said my piece about that. Um, and I'll tell you what. More than anything, what she posted about trying to get Zellner disbarred, I just kind of 
kept chuckling about it all day long really just every time i would like think about it while i was i was just kind of doing something at work and then i would think about that again and i'd kind of get a little chuckle out of it and and everything because i just thought it was funny it's like get real <laughs> so was there a chapstick missing from the rav for summer no they no they collected some chapstick from her house when they came to pick up the seven pairs of panties and the vibrators and the all that, yeah, they picked up some chapstick. Uh, it really wasn't a cut. I have, I too have terrible luck when it comes to women. <laughs> it's just sad to see him suffer. The majority of it, yeah, I know, absolutely. I heard this. I heard a story of someone that made a call to police that day. They thought. They thought they shoot someone on their property, and a son in jail confirmed that. I don't. I need more than that to really understand. I'm not a hundred percent sure what you're talking about, <laughs> there, um, Kevin. Uh, I'm 32, still making more on relationship decisions. Yeah. <laughs> But, hey, but at least we're not making it, but at least we're not like, you know, making the dumbass decisions of staying up and partying all night, even though we know got to work the next day and, and that sort of dumbass stuff, right? We're, at least we're not doing that sort of dumb stuff anymore, right? We've gotten past a, a majority of the dumb stuff we were doing back then, right? <laughs> um, Wendy also was disciplined for filming an incident when a queso uniform was burnt. Yes, I do remember... Uh, that, there, there was her burning that, that thing. I do remember that. It was a long time ago, but I do remember it. Her ex-boyfriend gave them the chapstick panties, didn't he? It, it was, yeah, he was there when they came to the house and they were going into her room and getting stuff and whatever. Uh, was found, I don't know if it was found on the bullet, but I think, well, was it? it I, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, let's see. Do you know... Why Teresa's family dropped lawsuit against Avery, but the appointed judge refused to drop it until months later. Um, I don't know why Judge Angela Sukowitz uh, tried to care, tried to you know obstruct that whole process there, uh, but it does show her bias because I mean she was ignoring what the family said and and thought she knew better. So, I mean, shows a pattern, I guess, with her. Uh, Lynn, she's so easy to read as a lady wanting attention and fame like a soap opera queen. <laughs> of course, she was all happy when she was in the car, you know, talking about, oh, yeah, I'm, so I'm going to be in the documentary, you know, and, and, and she seemed all happy and chipper. Until until Dr. Phil got in her head and did his little mojo on her. And then all of a sudden, dude, she started seeing things like... She started seeing reality as it was. Instead of through the rose-colored rose goggles she had on. And, uh, yeah. so Off topic, kind of. But did the cops take pics of the contents of the burn barrels when they were... I don't think so. Ertl, I heard... I saw... Ertl's testimony shows that they didn't really they didn't really take pictures of him. The bullet. Uh, okay, Joe's classic video games. They removed the item from her house, like the vibrator, and it magically was found in Stephen's house. Not sure where the chapstick ended up. Um, well, from what I understand, the chapstick was taken to evidence. The vibrator was taken into evidence. Uh, and those were all items that were sitting on Sherry Colhane's desk five months later when the bullet was brought in on, you know, March 2nd or whatever it is after they, after they coerced Brendan into saying that things happened in the garage. They were very keen to make Brendan say things happened in the garage. They were very dogged about it and they were very deliberate about it. And it was very, very clear that they had plans for the garage. Um, but do, do, do. hey guys, saw you were on earlier, but I was last minute carving pumpkins. Hi, Valerie, Judge Suckowitch <laughs> fixed it for you. <laughs> Suckowitch, or some people prefer Super Witch, eh, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever grabs you. 
Uh, that was Flowers. Seemed like a COI to me. That was Flowers. Uh, I think I missed something there. Um, let's see. Nothing found in the bullet but wooden dust. I, that's what I thought. How could Judge Angela be doing the civil case and overseeing a criminal appeals portion? Well, they're talking about back in back in in 05. She was the the judge when when the Hallbox were they were they were they were going to try to sue Stephen for personal damages basically for well, you know, for for personal loss, however you want to put it. And they were going to do that, but then they ended up dropping it. And 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 then, but for some reason, when they ended up dropping it, Judge Angela didn't drop it right away. She held on to it for some months before she finally signed off on it. Got the chaps, etc. Took it to the Avery's uh, for repackaging for evidence. Right on its way to the crime lab, it stopped off at the Avery property. That is uh, uh, something important to note. Uh, thanks, Paul. Nicole Wax was found on the bullet as well. Sherry seems skept to me. Yeah, she, oh, she's definitely... Sh Sherry Colhane's definitely skeptical. Uh, let's see here. They'll never let us test the wax to see if it's chapstick, will they? I don't know. I don't know if they can now because... It's been washed. So, I don't... Well... I don't know. I would imagine Zellner's experts are looking into that actually, because they do have the bullet. They had it. They had it at Microtrace, and and that sort of stuff. Um, I don't know if they took a sample of it or not, but Judge Flowers, aka Sikowich, or however you spell it. <laughs> Drum a lot. Okay, hold on, buddy. Let me find out. What do you think would be the biggest bombshell that could help Stephen and Brendan being totally exonerated? Biggest bombshell. The real, you know, whoever did it, basically taking responsibility, that would be pretty huge. Um, that or... Finding Teresa Hallbach's keys uh, somewhere in somebody's possession, mysteriously, you know, you know, like I don't know, a friend is house sitting for a friend, and and one day and finds these weird looking keys with a blue lanyard, and you know, you know, for whatever reason, like something stupid and and completely uh, in, in you know completely uh, uh, astronomical. The the odds of it ever happening are astronomical, but. You know, maybe something crazy like that. Yeah. Because we know we've never found Teresa's actual keys. So, those could be out there somewhere. In somebody's possession. So. Hope that was a good enough answer for you, Jerome. Uh, I think it's ironic that the consistently calmest and nicest people in this whole thing are convicted killers. <laughs> right. Hey, do you know about Wendy trying to plant a Band-Aid in the RAV4? There's, I have a video about that Band-Aid. It's actually, it was actually my second video? Third? Uh, when I actually started doing Brendan videos, it, I think it was my second video. Um, and it, and it's called, it was called something about the Band-Aid. I don't remember. I can't remember. Two and a half years ago now, so. Or two years ago now. Swabs. So Okay, plus, when Stephen was taken to the hospital to be swabbed, they took two swabs of his groin area, which they took from the, which they could, took from the bin and relabeled it to justify the DNA on the latch. Absolutely, that's what, that's what Zellner thinks happened. And that's what her, her experts are saying, that it was just a relabeling of, of, of these already existing swabs, but that weren't logged or, or, or into any evidence or anything. Uh, they just existed, but yet weren't logged, and there was no record of them. And they were able to easily be relabeled as the hood latch swab. Plus, okay. Um, 
What if somebody confessed 10 years ago again and Colburn answered the phone that day again? <laughs> that's actually a good point, Joe's Classic Video Games. That's, you know what, that's that's a fair point. Uh, Deanne, that's, uh, that's what I read somewhere. The truth always comes to light. See, dead right, Nicole Hudson. The truth, the truth will be exposed hopefully soon. Oh God, ball swabs on the hood ledge. <laughs> what was the what was the point to Queso Two from Calumet's point of view? They reopened the 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 investigation into the death of Teresa Halbach when Zellner filed her twelve hundred page motion. They read that, and they decided they wanted to reinvestigate I don't really know much more than that except that they did it right <laughs> um, Joe he'll write that report when someone when someone find it <laughs> yeah right I thought the medical records showed that he had been swabbed in the groin but then they realized that the warrant didn't order it. Yeah, of course. And it got thrown into a lock or it got thrown into a biohazard bin, right? Okay. So that's what the documents say it was thrown into a biohazard bin. What's to stop Wendy Baldwin, for instance, walking right back there, grabbing those two swabs, and then eventually relabeling those as hood latch swabs? What's to stop that? I mean, why were they collecting swabs they shouldn't have been collecting in the first place? Right? Right, right, right. You know, it's just highly suspect. Okay, didn't the DNA test woman get fired? No, Sherry Colhane still works there. Hopefully, more witnesses come forward and seen the Rav Four. Yeah, like that friend of Scott's that that says he he told Colburn that he saw the Rav Four on the on the you know fourth or whatever. Oh my God, dude. Um, Anita, yes, hope it. Okay. Microtrace specialists said they will extract every item in the bullet and test it. Uh, they were more interested in the type of wood found in the bullet so that it can be matched up to the wood on Stephen's garage. Right, the paneling, that wood paneling or something. Yeah, absolutely, that makes sense. Uh, let's see, doesn't Queso 2 reset... I call it Queso 2.0, by the way. Uh, reset the statute of limitations on the computer. I do not know. I do don't think so. I don't know. I honestly am not sure about that. Uh, that would explain the high level. Me too. What a joyous occasion that will be. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night, Kate. <laughs> it's funny they. It's funny that they reopened the investigation since they are so sure they are guilty. Them investigating speaks volumes. That's what I think. Plus, like I said, see, there was a few things in there that were f phenomenal. Number one, Brian Dassey. Okay? He was very, very not... He was not into... He was just not into having the investigators come in his house and talk to him. He he, he just... He wasn't into that. But he got over it. And he sucked it up. And he did his interview. And there was one point that I thought was brilliant. Where, you know, Dietering was trying to ask him about how Steve was acting up at Krivitz. And, and you could tell Dietering was trying to suggest like Steve was acting guilty. And and Brian just said, I just figured it was because he had spent so many years wrongfully convicted in prison. He was still trying to adjust. And I was like, boom! I was just like, dude, if I could give him a high five right then, I would just been like, oh, you know, oh my God. I was just like, you. I just was reading that going, you rock, dude. Oh my God, I love you. <laughs> Because I've always said that it's like the 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 Mark and Mark and Tom tried to suggest to Brendan that that Stephen was acting guilty at Krivitz or whatever, and and I said the same thing when I was when I was going through those when I was going through that with Brendan, and I said it's not paranoia, Tom, if it's happened to you once before, <laughs> it ceases to be paranoia at that point. I remember seeing a video hypothesizing, hypothesizing that Teresa was shot on the Avery property by accident since a few were out hunting that day. However, I haven't seen Casey looking into that. What do you think? I think probably not. I just... Nobody... I, I can't see anybody shooting her 
over by Steven's trailer. And the cell, the cell tower pings show that she drove away rather quickly. She wasn't, I mean, she got back on the road and to where she ended up pinging a tower that was, you know, too far away from Avery Salvage uh, to ping. And, and so they know that she, she did, she wasn't just, she wasn't there that long. So in order to have been gotten accidentally shot, she would have had to gone down, down where the cars are and that sort of stuff. And we got to remember that this is daylight. Um, and in fact, we, yeah, well, they, they tended to hunt at night. So not at two thirty. So, I mean, just a lot of reasons, really. Uh, Wisconsin is very special. Crescent Corner lady left because they didn't let her do the job. Uh, letting her, uh, yeah. I have chronic migraines, uh, cold back on your forehead and crunch some ice. <laughs> Sorry, I think Bullet FL is the best way to prove it was planted to get Avery a retrial. It's new evidence. Yeah. Or the DNA labs was investigated or I'm thinking of another case. You asked about the DNA lady, but she would but she was the coroner. No, the DNA lady would be Sherry Colhane. DNA lady would be Sherry Colhane. Uh, the coroner is is Debbie Cackett Catcatch. He was only married a few years and had four marries. Circumstances aside, what's your biggest reason Stephen Avery is innocent in one sentence? Oh, easy. No crime scene. Where did this happen? Uh, that's what my hubby thinks is very weird. Who hunts deer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Right. You normally go at dawn, dusk. Right, exactly. That's That's when they normally hunt too. So it wouldn't make sense that somebody accidentally shot her at 2.30 in the afternoon. Brutus map of where TH was that looks like a woman who could have been running for her life and chased in, into a circle for help before before being caught and killed. Yeah, I, I get that. I, I, I know that Zellner's, I mean, Zellner was talking about that in the, in the, in MAM2 there. Um, I really need to go and like re re watch that part and really kind of absorb it again personally. <clears throat> Hello, Silas. Thanks for clearing that up. Brendan said he was leaving to go hunting. About two forty five. Brendan didn't hunt. I think you mean Bobby, right? Forgot Teresa left the property. Your memory is awesome. Oh well thank you. Uh not much info on the 22. Scott tried to sell a work colleague that belonged. Yeah, well, it's it's known that he did. It's known that he did try to sell one, and it was the same exact model that was the one they took off of Stephen's bedroom wall. So, hello, no comment. <laughs> uh, let's see, exactly, no crime scene. Right, exactly. Uh, he he was hurting her. Sure, but that's in okay. Poggle did not allow Brutus to go any further than the circle on Cuss. Okay, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, the, re the, the reenactment scene gave me chills. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's true. No weapon, no crime scene. So, how is there a conviction? Yeah, it's just I, I don't see where this crime happened. And and what this and what the prosecution is saying happened, and what they're suggesting is it doesn't ring true. And they had to coerce a 16-year-old to get that train wreck. And yeah, it's just yeah, those are the reasons why, you know. But to say it in one sentence, where's my damn crime scene? Where the hell did this happen? <laughs> An episode of Criminal Minds where two men kidnap and release other people to hunt them down. Yeah, there's. I remember growing up as kids. There was even an episode of uh, what was it? An episode of Gilligan's Island where some guy came to the island and he ended up telling him. He ended up telling everybody he would take them all off, but he he wanted to hunt one of them, and so it ended up being Gilligan. And you know, so it's a common theme. There's actually a book that was written where. Uh, all these rich millionaires go to this island and they're going to hunt 
uh, a person and, and that sort of thing. So, cell phone last ping does does prove the murder happened on Cuss Road. Plus, makes sense since bones found there uh, before some of them moved to SA Fire Pit. Right. Do you have any thoughts on where she was possibly killed? Xander Road is one of the places that I... It's one of my favorites, personally. Um, I think that whoever wanted to frame Stephen knew that Stephen was, was looking into buying that property. And so, to me, it makes sense that somebody was looking to frame Stephen because he, he used to go there to go... He would go with his four-wheel drive car, you know, his, whatever he had, his Jeep or whatever. He would go there to go, like, off-roading and, like, what we call mud whomping. Um, and that sort of thing. And he was looking to buy that property. So to me, it makes sense that somebody was trying to do that and, and, and do that there so that it slightly Im implicated Stephen. I, I think the cops found it possibly. This is just one possible scenario. I think it's possible that the cops then found it and thought, oh my God, what is this? Just four and a half miles away from, you know. You know, so they started. They just they just saw it and went. Well, you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna do this different. Um, and it could it could be that that's what happened. But I don't know. We'll go with Zellner's theory because obviously, uh, the simplest the simplest you know theory is generally the correct one. Um, and right now her theory is pretty simplified. Whoops, uh, is pretty simplified. And um, and 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 I don't know. It, it maybe has a few little issues it has to iron out, but I think for the most part it's good. Uh, I want to know if Redant went cuss road, went cuss road after seeing every fire, or if he left by a gravel yard. Um, I'm not sure. We could go so far as even say no body and not enough body body fluids to indicate death. Yes. We have bones, but they weren't re re they weren't retrieved by a forensic archaeologist archaeologist to be pro processed. Right. Um, Xander Road, yes. <laughs> uh, two hillbillies say they went hunting at the same time. What were they hunting? Wabbits. <laughs> That's funny. Um, all them people going to the island, and not one of them told authorities about. My man's Gilligan, my, my man's Gilligan in them. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, after trying to after trying to hunt Gilligan and, and murder one of them, he didn't want them to come back and and get charges on him, right? So, uh, any guess on what all the sealed exhibits are? I believe. Well, I remember there was a sealed there was a sealed envelope, but Z Zellner opened it up and there was nothing in there. It was supposed to be a CD. I'm wondering if maybe that's the CD that's in that was in Tom Fassbender's custody, or if it was maybe the the zipper's voicemail. Um, there's been some speculation about that, but we've never really found out for sure. Uh, all the people going, yeah. Xander Road, the place with the awful smell affecting the livestock. Yeah, they actually broke through the fences on the eastern edge of the property, trying to get away from the smell. Uh, so, any guess of what all the sealed exhibits are? Right, like I said, uh, if they if they had if they had not had such a hard on for arresting Steve, they might have discovered evidence for the real crime scene. And uh, yes, right, exactly. I think Ryan was stalking her that day. Got got mad and killed her, and he stalked people before, and he won't and he won't talk to his owner. Right. Those things, uh, I don't know about him stalking other people, but um, well, everything else there I know is right. Once one sentence, Justin. There is no tangible forensic evidence linking Stephen to this crime. Only very questionable evidence that has been debunked. My theory is Ryan Hillegas um, is Ryan Hillegas, as all evidence points to him. Right? Okay. Uh, whoops! Meant to stay. Meant stay married to him. Barb should have should have left Scott immediately back in the day. No normal person would stay with him. Well, yeah, it's you know everybody ha to each their own. You know, so let's see. Right, both of them said they were going hunting, and he said 
He said he saw Bobby on the expressway. Like, are you kidding me? And he and he said he knew Bobby was going hunting the how. Right, exactly. If they were passing each other on the freeway, how did they know these things? So, uh, why say no to Kathleen observing the t and, and testing it? Well, they're they're saying no to a lot of things. They're they're just obstructing. They don't want to let Zellner. They don't want to let Zellner do what she wants to do because they know that her experts are the best. And they they have reason to fear. You'd think that people let's see, uh, yeah. You'd think people would want to have have or are been implicated in the crime would want to talk to KZ to clear their name. Yeah, you'd think. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, a couple people were involved. Heroes to save their country. Uh, Hillgas killed her and was talking to detectives, so he knew what to put, where and when. Yeah, right. Uh, let's see, Anthea. I agree. Ryan Hill. Ryan lied at least twice. And why did he delete her voicemails? If it, well, if it was Ryan, might have been Ryan. Might have been somebody else. I've been here listening for about ten minutes. Just wanted to let, just wanted to let you know, I enjoy all these videos. Thanks for making them. I've always, I've always said they never looked at anyone else but Steven as a suspect. Well, thank you very much, Stevo. And yeah, you're right. They were just, it was, you know, tunnel vision, totally all the way. Dan Cox, I believe, uh, when she left Stevens, she did make it. She did make it home, and Hillegas was there, and he killed her in a jealous, blind rage. Uh, Teresa's roommate was having a sexual relationship with her, or had had sexual relations, um, but apparently Teresa didn't, she was breaking that off uh, with Scott Bladorn. Uh, KZ has requested to seal at least three, requested to seal at least three or four of her exhibits. Okay, I don't know about that, because when she's doing that, she's trying to keep it from everybody. She's she has, you know, there's a reason for it, so that's interesting. What do you think about the day planner? She logged, she logged right up to her death, and Ryan had, yeah, I mean that's that's a problem for Ryan. That is a huge, huge, huge problem. Along with him saying that she um, got the made an insurance claim on the blinker and got a lump sum and just never fixed it. That's also a problem for Ryan. Um, why he's saying these things, I, yeah, so. Good night. Oh, good night, Lori. The taillight is being denied because it will shed light. I'm betting on it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't want. They don't want to let her have it because, you know, they figure she's going to be able to prove something that they don't want her to prove. Um. Yeah. Because they know the truth will come out. Right. Exactly. Nobody but Ryan had passwords. Right. Well, he helped with, with Ryan along with her sisters were able to guess the passwords. Uh, the password password issue is sus. Um, yep, great bids, Rich. Oh, thank you, Stacy. Uh, ain't this funny? Steven going to inherit all Kratz assets and future earnings <laughs> from his book. Ah, that's funny. Uh, Anthea Francis. Uh, I think that's what's happened. Jealous boyfriend like Hillegas will do crazy stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, day planner is a key. Yeah, I think you're right. Hillegas deleted Teresa's voicemails. So that when people were calling her, it wouldn't, it wouldn't raise much, so much suspicion if her inbox was full. This is why three days elapsed before. Yeah, that's a fair amount of sense to that. Um, this gave Hillegas time to get rid of the body, uh, or to do whatever he was doing. Yeah. By the way, for those folks who may not have realized, the the fire at Xander Road was actually on November first. So somebody had an entire day with Teresa. If, in fact, the fire on Xander Road is what I think it is. So, so somebody would have had an entire day with her. Think about that. Um, sorry if I missed it. I just saw this live. Curious as to what is next that MAM2 is done. As to what is next that MAM2 is done. Next, we wait for Zellner to file, which she's going to file. Um, eventually, we'll probably see Brendan's lawyers gearing up to file. 
something. So that's that's bound to happen. It's, well, we know that Zellner's going to file. So it's just a waiting game to uh, when things happen. And then when they happen, it's not like every day. So, you know... You guys will find in a couple months you'll start you're gonna start checking in on my channel every couple of weeks just to see if anything new has happened. That's that's kind of probably what I foresee happening. <laughs> uh, Ryan could have her off the road and then the spot the car on the broken tail. Right. See the reason why the tail light that that smudge on the tail light's important because they think it hit the pinto that was blocking the back entrance into Avery Salvage. So they think that that smudge of brown is the brown paint off of that pinto. So, uh, entire day to move bones, plant. Yeah, that's yeah. If if in fact it was over on Xander Road, Jerry insisted that Willis make all the evidence available for pu for future testing. It's not up to the state to decide what KZ can test, but the court. Especially now with the holidays coming. So. I can't till let's see. I can't till the news says breaking news. Stephen Brendan are free. <laughs> That's good to hear. You know, I feel the same way. I'll be here. I'll be here spreading the word no matter what myself. So, in BD's trial, was he also? Let's see. Was he also denied uh, Denny? I don't know. I you know. I'm actually not sure about how Denny went at his trial, but I would imagine it would have went exactly like it did at Stevens. What color car did Bobby have and Ryan? I don't know. Ryan, Bobby had somebody. What was it? A, a blue blazer? Yeah, I'm not. He had a couple cars. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that one. Only way by law. Zellner can win, even though it's good she has reinvestigated the case front and back, is to get new evidence or prove ineffective counsel. And she's, well, uh, you know, I think, I don't know, I guess the new evidence may be in question, but she's, she's also, she's definitely also citing ineffective counsel, so ineffective assistance of counsel. So, I uh, need to prove the brown pinto paint for sure. Yeah, definitely. The day planner and uh, and Ryan obtaining it is the reason I think Teresa made it home and was killed by her by Hall Yeah, You're right. That would make sense. People who think Steve is guilty are forgetting motive. He was innocent of the rape in '85, so a person doesn't just ejaculate from stealing a few dollars and doing stupid things to uh, committing a murder. Right? Absolutely. Uh, they are going to wash any paint or smudges before KZ gets her hands. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's in the pictures. So if it was washed off, that would open a whole new can of Brady worms, I think. Um, anyways, so the other thing we were going to talk about today was this supposed, uh, you know, changing stories of Stevens that isn't really true. Um, there was somebody asking me yesterday, I believe... I, I think it might have been Silas to watch this video um, about the changing stories of Stephen, right? And it's made by somebody who believes that that um, Stephen and Brennan are guilty, or at least leans that way. And the thing is, is that I started, you know, I started watching this video, and and immediately I was because I was expecting to see statements from Steve, but that's not really what it is. What it is, is it's statements that people are saying Steve made. That's hearsay. So every single point in the video is hearsay. To start. The first thing that, 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 that this points out is that Fabian... And Earl, or sorry, Earl, Fabian and Chuck are talking to Stephen on on the thirty first, uh, sometime around like I guess six ish, five thirty six o'clock, right? We all know what he would have. We all know what he would have been doing at that time, right? But, but apparently, he was talking to Fabian and Chuck while he was doing that. 
and uh, basically there, basically there, there's this account of Stephen telling them that the girl never arrived. Okay. See, the whole thing. Number one on the surface of this, if Stephen's in the middle of raping and killing a girl and stuff, does he really have time to like go outside and hang out and and and, and shoot the shit with Earl and and Fabian kind of? You know, thing like, I mean, I would think that Stephen would, if he was doing something like that, he was gonna not want anybody around at all. I can't imagine him hanging around and with, you know, being anywhere but, you know, off on his own while he was doing whatever he's doing. So it's, it's to me strange that, that they're even claiming a conversation took place at six o'clock. It makes more sense to me that this conversation took place, say, at two o'clock because she hadn't shown up yet but i don't know they say it's they say by the accounts of you know the document that this was taken from it says that it was around like supposedly six o'clock in the evening which is strange because that's right in the middle of him when he's supposed to be supposedly raping and killing Teresa. so there's that statement which is for the reasons i've just pointed out very strange <laughs> Yeah, it's I, I agree because when when you hear when you hear Steve in the news or the news clips and any any time you hear Steve in a new in a in an audio clip or whatever, his story was always the same. It didn't change. It was always the same. It was always the same. It's only changes when you start getting the second hand accounts from the sheriff's officers or from Mr. Fabian. It's only when you start getting hearsay. Then when you start getting the hearsay, that's when you're, you know, that's, you know, that's when all of a sudden Stephen is changing his story. So if you leave out the ca the accounts of hearsay, Stephen's story never changes. But we'll go on to the next account of hearsay. The next one is from, guess who, folks? Sergeant Colburn. Oh, we could trust him, right? So what did Colburn say, Stephen said? Hmm. Colburn says that Stephen said he saw her through a window. That he watched her through the window. It's, I mean, and that she came, and then, and then Andy says that, that Stephen said she came inside of his house. So I've never heard Stephen make that claim. And all I have here is an officer that I know is shady and has done something in this case, probably a few things in this case. So how am I supposed to take what he's saying as the gospel. I can't. Andy Colburn is just like anybody else in Manitowoc. They forfeited their right to to the benefit of the doubt. They forfeited it because they've proven themselves to be such asshats. So anyway. So Anyway, there was that. So there was that with 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 Colburn. Um, then there was there was uh, there was another account. Oh, like I said, came into my residence. That one when that the guess who was saying that that Stephen said she came in? Oh, it was James Link, right? The first one when he said he just watched her through a window. That was what he. That was what Andy Colburn says. Stephen said. Then you would get James Link saying that. Stephen says she came inside. So we get all these changing stories, but all these changing stories only come through agents of law enforcement and through hearsay accounts. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that when we hear it straight from Stephen's mouth, it's always the same and it's consistent. And basically, whoever was asking me about that video, that's how I feel about it. Because Stephen himself, I have never seen waver. The, the agents of the state, I've seen them, I've seen them caught in many lies. Many, many, many lies. So, you know. Uh, let's see, Dave Vagaka. His room never matched what they said happened right because it never happened right. Hey buddy, what have I missed? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking a bit about Lynn Hartman and, I don't know, a couple things. Uh, Dave Bagatka 
said he's seen Steven at the gas station at around 5 p.m. And Yeah, right, exactly. Nicole Hudson, he never said that. Uh, when you t when you tell the truth, you don't have to make a you don't have you you don't have to have a good memory. Colburn, one shady idiot. <laughs> this is why good people can't trust cops. Uh, Brendan's only consistent story was he went home and played PS2, got a call from Blaine's boss, watched TV, got a call from Steve, went and picked up the garbage cabinet tire. Yeah, and threw them in the fire. Yeah. So that yeah, it's, for me, Brendan's story never changed, and Stephen's story has never changed. That's one of the things that keeps me on their side. Well, Brendan, I believe, is a hundred percent innocent. I mean, it would take an act of God, really, to change me from that belief. Um, he was completely railroaded. He completely was guessing at everything that was going on there, and 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 the supposed things that he offered. <laughs> that are supposed to prove his guilt can't be corroborated. Uh, so it's a ridiculous farce, really. Colburn's a bad man. <laughs> exactly. Bobby's never... Uh, Bobby's never said she went in either. Uh, right? Uh, Anthea didn't run off road. Probably called her or flagged her down. Could be. Stephen was also at the shop, according to, the, to Fabian. Uh, could they went... Could... Could they went have been, could they have been the third when she missed the last appointment? Hmm. Okay. Was Brennan's DNA on the mail? Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if they ever tested that. Uh, you are right, Eric Cose, about how cops will twist and add their own facts. To a story to make a person look guilty and or suspect. Oh, I know. I know. I have a few friends that are police officers and stuff like that. I mean, and I know most officers, 99%, are, are good people. But sometimes you get these pockets like you had in Manitowoc in 1985. And, I mean, look at what it's caused. And look at the, look at how it's continued as that snowball has continued to roll downhill. And it's picked up other, other people in it along the way. And, you know, it's just... A sad thing. Um, what do you think of the courts denying KZ certain things? Uh, there, you know, you got, you just got to understand it is what it is right now. They're, um, they're, they're, they don't, they don't want to be found out. They don't want, they don't want this to all, you know, blow up in their face. They're, they're gonna do. They're gonna fight it un until they can't fight it anymore. That's they're gonna do everything they can to avoid having to pay the piper on this, and that's just that's just what they're that's just it's it's just that's just the reality of it. Uh, da -da -da. Can you tell me what you think about the dog track scent and the placement of the bones and why they're mad? Why their mad saw bone marks on on the discovered ones in Manitowoc County's side by Joshua Downs property. So that's because Zellner's new theory is that Scott and Bobby did it, and the bone cut marks or whatever the saw marks on the bone um, indicate a tool that hunters use um, when they're gutting an animal or trying to um, you know cut up an animal and dismember an animal. So um, because it's it, it, she's basically saying that a similar tool is used for that. Oh, thank you very much, Sila. Okay, you you got it. it happens in real time. <laughs> there it is. So um, what was I saying? So, yeah. How many of Steven's recorded statements came before MAM's inception? I pretty much all of them because um, all those statements came actually, I think most of them. Some of them might have been actually when he was doing a prison call with maybe a reporter, but most of them 
were before he was arrested. So they would be in 2005. Um, but there may be a few where he did interviews from prison, where he called a reporter basically from prison and did an interview. And there certainly probably is that. So, um, but I'd say most of them are 2005. Thank you, Silas. <laughs> You've restocked. I have. <laughs> Stella, some good. Yeah, absolutely. I love Stella. I also like Blue Moon, too. Blue Moon's really good. Oh, another Stella. <laughs> Oh. I'll drink faster for you there, Rain. So that um, so that so that somebody else can have the chance to buy me one if they want to. So I'll try to drink faster for you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's Ken's uh, that's Ken's Twitter there. Good old Kenny. Good old prize. Something else that might be happening, folks, that you might, you might, I don't know if you guys have heard of Fresh Start Mondays. He's another YouTuber. Your poor liver. I don't drink that much, really. <laughs> um, hello from Australia. Oh, hi, Kareem. Oh, thank you. Those are from Stacy's. Those catchy tunes in my intros are from Stacy Seabrook. He's even commenting in this chat. He's brilliant. You have two hands. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> um, hate to leave early, but need to get to the shops. Okay, well, it's, it was good to see you, Karen. <laughs> Kratz is a stand-up guy. <laughs> yeah. Model citizen. <laughs> yeah. He's uh he's great. <laughs> Alright, got it, Rain. Got it. So here we go. Just had to get the, see I had to get it open first, but there you go. I'm two fisted. <laughs> uh what state you in? I'm on the west coast. Um we should all meet at a bar some night and debate in person. Sure. I'm in, I mean, basically I'm in California, so it's a big place. Uh, Kenny and his piglet. Yeah, I know. That's what, uh, that's what I saw. I was watching uh, Casey Martinez's video, Mama Phoenix. I was watching her video today, and uh, I was cracking up because she, she used to always call him Wilbur. I used to love that. I always thought. I always loved that about Casey, the way she used to call Kratz Wilbur. Um, always reminded me of Mr. Ed. and I don't know. Anyways, I just loved it. I thought Wilbur was funny as hell. But when I heard her calling him uh, Porky, <laughs> I thought that was funny. Oh, man. Eric Jose is a lightweight, two Stella, and he'll start He'll start really havering. <laughs> sure thing, Paul. You, should get, you guys should see Paul once he's had a couple. Oh, my Lord. I'm going to talk about Havering. Fresh Start is solid. So, yeah, as I was saying about Fresh Start is, you know, if you like Fresh Start, get get ready for something from him and I coming up soon. He's trying to figure out how, how him and I can do a call, and he's right now trying to figure out how he can record it on his end because I already know how I can do it on my end. I've been doing this for a while, so I already know how to do it on my end. He's now trying to figure out how he's going to record on his end. Uh... And then we're going to get together for a Skype call and do a video um, and everything. So that's another thing hopefully coming up in the future. I don't know if you guys would be interested in. So I was kind of wanting to run that idea by you uh, and see what you guys think. Is he the TikTok Manitowoc guy? No, no. TikTok Manitowoc guy is Charlie Barron's. 
but he's very funny. Charlie Byrne's a very funny guy. Um, hi, gang. Oh, thank you, thank you. This is the blue shirt I'm wearing, by the way. Some people have been um, asking me about seeing me in Making a Murderer 2. So, um, this is the shirt. This is the shirt I'm wearing. It's in episode 10, if you look at when they're when they're covering the rally. In episode 10, uh, that's this year's rally. And if you look, you'll see this color shirt. That's me. So I had some people asking, so I wanted to wear this shirt today and just mention that. Uh, so that some of the people that were wondering will know. So yeah, that's me. I'm wearing this. On the second day, I was wearing my uh, my 2018 rally t-shirt. Uh, and I was wearing the 2018 rally t-shirt when I actually got interviewed by a camera crew. Um, oh boy, this is getting good. <laughs> Do you think Bobby and Scott did it? Uh, I, I believe that it's possible. I thought I heard the other day that Kratz is immune from prosecution. He, yeah, he, the OLR, the, the, the office for lawyer regulation there in Wisconsin pretty much let him off. Porkian, Porkian. <laughs> yeah. According to the statements, Bobby, friend Michael Osmondson, uh, was dating Steven's favorite niece, Marie motive for Mike. Exactly. That's why I've, that's why I'm still currently interested in Michael Osmondson. That's pretty much exactly it right there. Um, California. Nice. I lived there. Let's see. I lived there back in 2000, I think, uh, Southern Cal Rialto, San Bernardino. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a pretty nice area. Uh, Wilbur is Charlotte's pig. That's true too. I know, but I always think of I always think of Mr. Ed. You know, hey Wilbur. That's I mean seriously. Every time she said Wilbur, that Mr. Ed saying hey Wilbur would play in my head. It was funny. So, but I I know yeah Charlotte's pig. Um, how long ago did this start? It started an hour and twenty six minutes ago. Uh, all right. Oh, good. That would be so cool. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm glad you guys will be into it. I mean, if, if you get enough, you can prank call Kratz. <laughs> I would never do that. I, I take my I take my credibility seriously, and so it's very important that I don't do really mean-spirited, dumb things like that, even though he deserves it, even though he absolutely deserves it. I don't do those sort of things because... I, you know, my reputation is for being, you know, a straight shooter, uh, no drama, no BS, just calling it like I see it. And I don't, I just don't get caught up in, in those kinds of games, uh, of personal attacks and that sort of stuff. I'll point to the facts and I'll let the facts do all the talking. I prefer to do that. That's, that's what I'm good at. Uh, cause there's a lot of convincing is evidence starting to pile up. Uh, against them yeah there is absolutely there has been trust me i've been in this for months this evidence has been piling up for the last six to eight months um a lot of people are only learning about it now because mam2 was something that they could sit down for 10 hours and absorb a whole bunch of new information and and even that is only the tip of the iceberg so it's yeah you know uh if you get enough (laughs) You put us put what does that say put your australia shirt back on i'll wear it again in a new in a, in a, in a video soon i mean hey i love to showcase the international support i love i love all the international support it you know it it for for people that aren't that don't even live in this country to feel this you know this particular um you know, issue in this particular case so strongly, I think speaks volumes. Um, the, the folks that we had that showed up at the rally this year from overseas, like Mark Hodnot, and there was a, a couple from, from, um, over in Holland. Uh, there was, uh, you know, I mean, it was, it was amazing. There was was somebody else, there was somebody else there. I mean, it was, it was really amazing, really. And, and, and when I get on, when I get on, you know, Facebook and stuff, there's just so many great supporters just all over the world, everywhere. Uh, so many in the UK, so many in Australia, so many in Denmark and Holland and, you know, 
in the Netherlands and so many in, you know, in Ireland and, 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 you know, it's just, there's just for people that don't even live here to, to have taken it that much to heart is just very impressive. <laughs> you saw me and also Mark. Oh, cool. I thought that was you. So yeah, that's the shirt that I'm wearing, but this won't be the shirt I'm wearing. If we ever end up seeing the, 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 the interview that I gave for the camera on the second day, I won't be wearing this. I'll be wearing, it's a gray shirt. Uh, and it's the rally t-shirt from, from, uh, this year. TikTok Manitowoc has been stuck in my head since you added it into your intro. <laughs> it's funny. Sometimes I'll play that song and my and my girlfriend will say the same thing about an hour later. She'll say the same thing. She's like, I got TikTok Manitowoc stuck in my head. <laughs> uh, what happened to Kratz? Did he finally get in trouble? Uh, no, he's still, he's still Kratz. He's not really practicing law anymore. Uh, mainly be just because he's, I mean, publicly he's hated. Um, so I, it would be hard for him to, to build up a business or a law firm. Charlie Barron's is Manitowoc Minute. That's right. Uh, got caught trying to smuggle three frozen hams in an airplane. <laughs> Maybe Kratz could do a live Skype call with you. I doubt he will. I'd, I'd do it, but I doubt he will. Laura, Laura Keck, I'm um, sorry, uh, Purple X Cutie, um, she's been trying to call Kratz out for like over a year. She's been trying to call him out and get him to call and, and, and debate with her on her channel, but he, he never will. He never does. Uh, who would waste time on games and facts? Facts, yes, absolutely. Eric Jose versus Kratz. <laughs> yeah, I'm late to the party. Was just watching a Fresh Start Monday vid and saw this was live. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I'm thinking about... So pretty soon him and I are going to do one. He's Him and I were talking about it this weekend. He started talking to me today. Him and I were talking on Messenger. And I, unfortunately, I was working. And um, I had to... I, I couldn't get back... Him and I were talking and then I couldn't get back to it right away. And then by the time I did get back in there, it looked like he got pulled away. And I haven't heard back from him yet. So... But him and I will get it worked out. He'll figure out how he's going to do the Skype and record it on his end. And, you know, so uh, that's basically where we're at on that. Do Charlie Barron's is also TikTok Manitowoc? No. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Thanks for looking into the Changing Stories video. Yeah, absolutely. I catfished Ken Kratz. <laughs> uh, were Laura and Moira at the rally? Did they actually uh, hold the camera in court? No, they weren't. They weren't there. The fact of the matter is, is that none of us knew which camera crew was what. In fact, I still don't know what the one. I still don't know what the camera crew who who uh, interviewed me. I still don't know who they're attached to. I'm assuming, kind of, or at least I'm kind of guessing that it was convicting a murderer but I don't even know that for sure I can say this the lady doing the interviews she was a she was a teacher she was I got I think she said she was a professor like a college professor an English professor uh, which was interesting but so she was like there as the interviewer uh, to like ask questions and stuff so when she eventually asked me the question about you know, the, the control question essentially um she didn't need to ask any more questions after that because i just pretty much took over and I'm like went on a monologue so <laughs> um i texted to my girlfriend while she is working <laughs> let's see uh eric Jose, how do you feel about all of the people that denied being on mem2 you know that's their right that's their right they're allowed to say they don't want to take part Okay, but they can't go crying foul later and say that they weren't given a chance or they weren't, they can't do any of those things. It's fine. Absolutely fine that they did not want to take part. That is their right. They have the right to make that decision. But what they can't do if now is they can't take that and turn it around and try to say that they weren't given an opportunity. 
that is now not an option for them because it has been made clear that they were given the opportunity, that they declined the opportunity. So that's the important thing about those names on that list. Uh, I text my girlfriend while she's working. <laughs> uh, no, that was just the Stella confusing him. <laughs> All right, now I'm back down to one fist so that I can hold my beer and use my mouse at the same time. Woohoo! All right. Uh, oh yes, she was. She has. She has badly. <laughs> I wondered things, Paul. Hey, look what you find when you wake up in the middle of the morning. <laughs> Hello, Rebecca. Let's see here. Pro, po, let's see. Post to that e ek about the non participants that declined. Can you try the beginning of that one again, there, Randin? Rand, Randin? Randin? Uh, I'm not quite. Those first three or four or five words, I'm not. I'm not getting it there. Uh, I would like to know who each one is why they are linked and why they may not want to partake some will be for obvious reasons right Pro oh yes prost okay right got it yes <laughs> took me a second I, I basically just as you were telling me what that word means was extra was extrapolating what that word meant. That was kind of funny. All right, <laughs> but that's good. I guessed right. So cheers, right? Cheers. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm thinking you know that might be cool to do do one with Dave. You know. Um, and we could definitely make that one about, you know, talking about how the whole 1985 situation definitely led into the 2005 situation. Um, I think that would be good to do with, with Dave because, like I said, Dave was there then, back then. And he's been following this all along. And, you know, he knows he knows a lot of the ambiance that, that was behind, well, that went on in the case long before any of us you know knew anything but long before mam came along he was there since 1985 he was on the beach in you know in 1985 and was around when they found penny and so it you know i think doing a doing the the uh the kind of timeline and the how how 1985 leads into the 2005 Teresa Hallbach case I think is something that me and Dave can do together I think it would be pretty cool and Dave and I have talked about doing a video together but we just never ended up uh, actually getting to it uh, it's 3 in the morning in Scotland 4 maybe 4 in the morning wait let's check let's see what time is it in Edinburgh See, you know I love you if if I enter your if I enter your main city into my world clock. Uh, it's almost five o'clock for Mr. Capaldi. <laughs> What's he doing up? Well, he supports me. He, you guys didn't know, man. Paul Paul is my promoter. He's uh. He's, 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 he works hard. You know, he's, uh, he, he burns the candle at both ends. He's, he's absolutely amazing. <laughs> uh, congrats, Ken Kratz is a disgusting human being. Yeah, he's just, I don't think he's disbarred. Uh, and he claims he is no longer a part of the case and, but yet inserts himself at every moment, every possible chance he can. Right, exactly. <laughs> 448 in England. Yeah, so that's what I, yeah, that's what I'm showing here. Uh, let's see, that's about the time I go to bed. 
<laughs> That's funny. I saw where uh, Sheriff was trying to subpoena filmmakers. Do you know what came of that? Uh, they did subpoena. Actually, Kratz subpoenaed the filmmakers for MAM1. He subpoenaed them, and they had to turn over. They had to like turn over their like copies of all their stuff to him and stuff. It was crazy. They were they were um, they were worried like he was going to try to do something to shut them down or whatever. But he he apparently didn't. I bet he kicks himself now for that. But twelve a.m. in Wisconsin, yeah. <clears throat> it's almost ten here, so. I watched most of Dave's videos uh, the last two days, last two todays. Uh, when he talks about the club stuff, crazy stuff. Yeah, the club stuff is crazy. But, I mean, I can imagine, uh, like, you know, groups, you know, kind of groups of people that get together and do that sort of thing where, you know, it's 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 not, for me, it's not beyond imagining. Um, so... And it could be that there was a good old boys network and that he was encountering some really sick, twisted parts of it. Um, you know. <laughs> well, at least I get everybody in England with insomnia. You know. Happy to be here to give you something to focus on before you go back to sleep. <laughs> thing you know that I don't know I was thinking about possibly being able to do here was um, I was always kind of thinking about recreating the the blood spatter but now that MAM 2's come out and it's been explained to everybody um, I don't really need to but I the only reason I never did the blood spatter video is because I was having trouble actually figuring out how I was gonna come up with the blood for it I didn't want to use like corn syrup and and, uh, you know, whatever water or whatever there's, like, whatever the recipe is to make fake blood. But I didn't want to do that because it's not authentic. It's not, you know, people could make the argument that, oh, well, maybe that's not, that doesn't act like real blood, you know. And I can, you know, I can honestly see them making that argument and I couldn't honestly hold it against them. So um, I was waiting to try to find, try and get some real blood, but never that never happened. Um but like I said, now the MAM 2's come out and everybody now has gotten a pretty good understanding of that. It's probably not necessary. But, um, there's probably lots of areas of the case that I haven't talked about in a long time that I probably should. I should probably have to go through my, my list of videos to come up with some more ideas. But, but that was a good one that you suggested, c because... It frustrates me the way that they say Steven's story changed. When you see Steven talk, it that's not true. When you see Steven talk, his story is consistent. Boom, 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 boom. So it always angers me when, when, when you know, I, I see like, oh yeah, Colburn said, oh yeah, James Lank said, oh yeah, you know, it's like, oh, give me a break, dude. Are you kidding me? Those guys? <laughs> Planters nuts? You know, anyways. Cheers. Do a burn test of some meat. See if you can completely destroy it in an open fire. Might be a little sensitive though. Um, you know, actually my friend Johnny did a video kind of like that where he had, um, he lives in Oklahoma and he has kind of rural property. And he, ha he has a bunch of animals and he had a llama that got um, too close to the lake when it was raining. And it somehow got stuck in the mud and got drowned when the water level of the lake rose. Uh, and so he ended up he ended up finding it, and he ended up burning it in in um, in when he was burning off like all of his uh, like his leaves and and various things like that when because they do they'll do controlled burns and that sort of thing. So. He, well, he put it in, he put it in with with all the leaves and stuff it was this huge 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 bonfire that he made and he did a video where he shows what happened he actually did two different burns on these llama bones and and the llama bones are all still in very you know are still in you know pretty darn good shape haven't really haven't lost a lot of their mass uh, and that sort of thing so it's interesting I can try to leave a link to that video for you guys after this video processes 
I've been posting all your videos after I've been posting all your videos after we get done. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. <laughs> it might be almost 5 a.m. here, but it's worth staying up uh, as the live videos are cooler than the pre-recorded videos due to the interaction. I yeah, I figured people feel that way. I still kind of like see. I'm I'm feeling like you guys are kind of missing out though. That's what I'm kind of feeling like because when I upload, that's when you guys get cool stuff like documents and I get to. You know, I get to throw that kind of cool stuff in there. And someday I'll be able to do that with this. But but right now I'm having trouble, as you guys know. Whenever I try to show you guys documents, we start getting that audio issue where it sounds like I'm talking in a cavern and echoing over myself. So we can't have that. So Back when I miss, um, you know, we solved, we solved uh, world hunger and we're declaring world peace. No, I'm just kidding. Eric Cousy, did you check out the burning deer carcass test on YouTube? No, haven't seen anything about a burning deer carcass. Uh, but like I said, did know, did have seen a video rever uh, that where a llama was burned. Uh, let's see, that's what I always heard too. If they didn't see the key and they didn't know the key was there and they searched it behind it, why manhandle it? And after shaking the hell out of the stuff on it, right? Exactly. And the coins don't even move on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you use OBS to stream? Yes, I do. I use OBS. That's what I'm using. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> uh, you missed Eric Jose getting half lit. <laughs> I think I'm still getting half lit. All right. Oh, love Stella. Oh, you know what, guys? Check this out. The other thing that I get to do when I do uploads is I get to add in little kind of little extra stuff sometimes, little extra things, little funny little things. And one of those things that I sometimes add in is is a little pup, little little puppy dog that I know, um, owned by somebody I know, and he is just like the cutest little guy. And I have little clips of him, little video clips of him, like one where he's like growling, one where he's like going, you know, like like you know, like it's kind of like he's like trying to figure something out, like he's doesn't know what's going on, kind of thing, right? And so I have these different clips of him making these different noises. And, uh, and so I would occasionally insert them. So like, I would have like the clip of blue growling after like, after something from a document where Kratz, whatever says something that would piss us off. Right. So I'd put it in this little clip of blue, uh, growling or whatever, like going, you know, you know, kind of thing. Right. Well, today somebody sent me a video, um, of, of blue. And it was just so freaking funny. I thought I might try to show it to you guys here. So, um, I'll tell you what, it's pretty hilarious. And, uh, seeing as the comments slowed down just a little bit, I'm going to show it to you now. Yar, mateys, shiver me timbers. Where's the rum? <laughs> so this is my buddy blue love that little guy funny so I, I sometimes use him in my videos so I just thought that was hilarious when they sent me that video today of him wearing the little pirate outfit I was about to die I was like dude Captain Jack Sparrow where's my rum <laughs> okay here goes a let's see here goes a what do you think about KZ kind of criticizing Knight Rider not and you know KZ has her opinions you know obviously she's you know she's she's very successful at what she does so you know she's bound to have opinions uh, I don't know I'm not really holding it against KZ too much um, but I think she might have been maybe a little bit overcritical possibly 
I believe in Brendan's innocence so much that I got myself a tattoo. I hope they both are exonerated as quick as the courts will allow. Yeah, as, co as quick as the courts will allow. There hangs the tail. Uh, what is your day job? My day job, I am a, like, uh, I'm a home automation technician. So what that means is, is I install um, equipment and, and um, basically like a, a type of a computer that controls like all of your TV and, and video uh, equipment, like your you know cable box, VCR, or uh, you know Apple TV, Blu-ray player, whatever. We do that where all that stuff you know in your family room or whatever gets controlled through one remote. We also have the ability to tie heating and cooling, you know, your thermostats into this into the system. We have the ability to tie lighting into the system. We have the ability, basically everything in the house where it can all be controlled through one app on your phone or through one remote um, in your hand or through a touch screen that we can put on a wall. Um, so I, that's what we do. It's, it's basically called home automation. Uh, but so many people, when I say home automation, go, huh? I always have to end up giving that explanation. So. To organize a massive rally, Swamp Manitowoc. A couple of Stella, Stellas and Eric Jose starts making dog sounds. <laughs> okay. Uh, there, there was a video to accompany those. Anyway, never mind. Same results as the llama. Teresa wasn't burned in the court. Right, exactly. Hashtag. <laughs> uh, Michelle, what's your tattoo? So adorable. Um, all blue is adorable. I have the I have the Captain Morgan Macaw view, or wait I have I have the Captain Morgan's Macaw if you want to be authentic. <laughs> uh, a cool topic could be debunking Guilter's videos. I recently watched a compelling video about the bleach stain and the three different chemicals that were supposedly used to clean the red stains. Okay, send the link over. I'll check it out. Uh, Michelle Sanders, uh, la, 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 daisies. Big dragonfly and daisies representing this on top of my arm. Oh, okay, yeah. Dragonfly and daisies. Dragonfly is Brendan's symbol, folks. Those of you who didn't know that, um, Brendan loves, likes dragonflies, and the dragonfly is his symbol. Um, a lot of the Brendan merchandise is created with the dragonfly. Um, and that sort of stuff. I this it doesn't have the dragonfly, but this is what I wear every single day, everywhere I go, even at work. And it's this. And basically, what it is is it's just a band that basically says justice and freedom for Brendan Dassey as it wraps around. And yeah, pardon me, I work with my hands, so I have some you know little whatever. But anyway, so I wear that everywhere I go. I you know. The only time the only time it comes off is when I take a shower, so <laughs> basically that's about it. So um, I try to support, show my support uh, as best I can. Um, I have to mute it at work, so that's why it's just this little armband. I can't obviously be, you know, screaming from the rooftops when I'm in a customer's house. So, um, but yeah, this allows me to represent. I I love this wristband. Um, I you know I think. Everybody that supports Ben and Dassey should make sure, make sure they get one and always wear it so everybody can see it. Three Stellas and he starts howling. <laughs> Paul and I are fans of the song Werewolves of London and he's and he's baiting me there. You're going to have to buy the third Stella then, Paul. <laughs> if you want to hear me say it, you're going to have to buy it. Um, you can buy a, yes, you can buy a control question t-shirt. You can send in the information below the video. There's an email address there. You send me an email there. Tell me what size, what color you want. Uh, they're black, green, and, uh, dark blue. You tell me what size, color, and what the address is where it's going to. Uh, send an email to the email address down below. Oh, me too. 
Do you ever have customers recognize you from videos and start asking you questions? I actually have not. Not yet. But folks, in the last week, since I started doing these live videos, since MAM2 came out, I'll tell you what, my channel has blown up. So I actually anticipate that the day is coming soon when that's going to happen. And it's going to be a little awkward for me when that happens. Trust me, it's going to be pretty awkward. I'm going to feel awkward. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to feel awkward about it. It's going to make me feel awkward, I know. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, not yet. Haven't had it, haven't had a customer recognize me yet, but, you know. It should blow up, man. You deserve it. Oh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm serious. Like, I had prior... Okay, the day before MAM2 came out, I had... Um, in a 28-day period, I had 112 new subscribers in a 28-day period. Since MAM2 came out, my analytics are now telling me that I have had 650 subscribers in the last 28 days. <laughs> so, you can see that it's about a 500% jump. So, um, yeah, it's things are going well right now. A lot of people are tuning in. And, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to... I'm starting to anticipate that I may actually run into some people out in real life. They're going to go, hey, aren't you uh, Eric Jose? So, you know, Eric Jose, maybe Teresa was murdered by a female assailant. Maybe. I, I, I mean, possibly. Oh, shit. There he goes. <laughs> Alrighty, Mr. Capaldi. Mr. Capaldi's desperately trying to get me to haver here. Because I'm so busy pointing out his havering all the time that now he's trying to get me to haver live. We'll see if it works. He might be successful. Unless I start talking about Captain Crunch, in which case he has no chance. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Ethel. I, I try to. That's why I like uploading videos, because I can actually give you guys more documents and more, you know, video footage and more, you know, just I can give you more of that type of stuff. Um, you know, I'm sure in the, in the next month or two, I'm going to figure out how to use OBS better, and then I'm going to be able to throw documents up on the live stream. Um, so hopefully we'll get to that point pretty soon. So, um, but that's right now it's, it's in terms of, for me being able to give you guys documents and all that kind of cool stuff, it's better if I can upload. So I'm going to probably start doing uploads, but what I'm going to do is I'll end up uploading them like I did last time. I'll upload it where it comes out during the day and everybody can watch it. And then I'll do, I'll do like a live stream that night where we'll kind of talk about what I uploaded that day or whatever. So I'm kind of thinking it'll go something like that. Oh, thank you so much, Messi. A lot. I've, I've heard that before about my laugh. I'm, I guess I'm a, I'm a very jolly person. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Capaldi. <laughs> Am I getting drunk? Oh, well. Buzzed, maybe. <laughs> yeah Joe I guess you can uh, hell I'll tell you what I, I gotta make this number big otherwise I don't because I don't really actually want anybody to do it if, if, I'll tell you what I'll pound the beer if somebody actually put up 40 that should be enough I bet none of you is going to put up 40 so that I'm safe I can just drink my beer at my leisure <laughs> but anyway <clears throat> uh, you must be one heck of a, you must have one heck of a bladder. Well, I, to be fair, that's one of the things I do before I go live is I go and I make sure that my bladder is completely empty. <laughs> so, um, but I can feel the need to go, but I, it's not bad yet. So as plausible as every other scenario, I was going to bring up the caption, but kept my, can my fies get silent till now? Okay. 
Um, Spice Melody, go back and watch his earlier videos. He's he's figured out some really cool stuff. Um, Mike's hard lemonade, huh? Yeah, I actually do like lemonade so much that I do I do like Mike's lemonade. Um, just but I it's because I love lemonade so much. Do you need a bathroom break? No, I'm actually we're over two hours, so we're gonna be ending it pretty soon here. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking maybe within the next 10 minutes or so. So so that Mr. Capaldi can, can watch me enjoy my beer that he bought me. <laughs> Good thing American beer is light on booze. Actually, this is from Belgium. Stella's from Belgium. But, uh, but you're right. You're actually right. You know, that, you know, I know back when I used to really, like, back when I used to drink, you know, when I was, you know, back when we could say I probably had a problem. <laughs> yeah. Back in my early 20s or whatever, me and my brother, you know, to save money, we would buy natural ice. Okay? You know, you guys know what that is? You you know natural beer? It's, it's like the bargain basement. It's like Milwaukee's Best or, you know... The, it's like it's like one of those where it's like just it's dirt cheap beer basically um yeah so we used to get natural ice uh and we called it naughty ice right because we just thought it was cooler to call it naughty ice and we bought it because it had that because it was ice beer or whatever it had the slightly higher alcohol content so we were buying the cheapest beer possible, but with the highest alcohol content possible. So, <laughs> uh, let's see. Thoughts on the guy. Okay. Let's see where we're at here. Oh, well. Um, let's see. Rebecca, it's in this Colorado and Canada, it's 6.5%. Yeah. Here, here in the U.S., like most domestic beers are 5%. Um, and then when you get into ice beer, then it gets up to around six or 6.5. And then if you get into malt liquor or malt, malt beer, then it gets up to around like eight, 8.5, 9%. Um, yeah. So that's, that's generally the way it goes. How long has it been since you drink from the eight ball? Anyway, that's, uh, thoughts on the guy that owns the quarry. I think I agree with Zellner. I think Josh Redant has cooperated. His 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 what he said makes sense. He doesn't seem uh, to be involved, but he did provide some pretty good information to Zellner and was helpful to her. Uh, so I, I I think I think he's 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 out of he's in the clear in my opinion. That's European beer, not American. A six pack will get you buzz for show. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, you just took off. Just took you off the big screen. You've been knocked back to the iPad. Ah, what happened? The husband came in and wanted to watch Game of Thrones. No. <laughs> Naughty. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we called it. We called it Naughty Ice. It was, you know, the way we referred to it, it was, yeah, funny. And what time usually you start? Generally, during the week, during the week. See, this is the funny thing, folks. During the week, it's generally going to be probably right about 8 o'clock like it was tonight. And I made the mistake when I scheduled it. I told it 9 o'clock. Um, that was my mistake, and it ended up so everybody ended up seeing it scheduled for an hour later than I intended. So that was a mistake I made tonight. But generally, generally about eight o'clock Pacific Standard Time is is when I would plan to go live. Uh, you know, because that's after work for me. I get home pretty late most of the time, but on those days when I get off early, and they happen, when I, there's days when I sometimes get off at like noon, and so I get an entire day to like do things that like I need to do, like run errands, like go to the DMV and, and do things I need to do. Right. But so when I get those days, those days I'll get home a little sooner. And on those days, whenever I can, if I can broadcast during the day, I will, 
because I know if I'm broadcasting during the day, I don't, I'm not dealing with a bunch of people that are about to go to bed or trying to get the kids to bed or trying to, you know, I, that's the unfortunate part I know that happens when I'm uploading at night like this. So ultimately I prefer to go sooner as soon as I can, but, but as it is, uh, generally it's probably going to be about eight o'clock because I generally usually get home between five and seven every day. So Mickey's get you wild too. Yeah. Mickey's <laughs> Renata's Corey already lied about it. He smelled the fire. Yeah. Okay. Well, boyfriend, no boy toy. Oh, Oh, so I just got kicked off. Oh, damn. That's harsh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, let's see. Those take so much energy. <laughs> cool. So, 11 here. Uh, let's see. Four behind me. So, 3 a.m. UK. My kid is still up watching you. <laughs> 1.30 a.m. Oh, wow. Tracy G. Uh, you in Wisconsin? Where, uh, where all this tick... Tickety, tick tockety, rickety, many crockery went. <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, hard, tough to say, but I like it. Um, Michigan, Michigan. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. It's okay. One day you will have a million subscribers, and this can be your job. You know, ultimately, that's what I'm hoping for. And I don't, you know. If I can, if I can eventually be researching and and making videos to try to educate people about some of this stuff and going to school most of the time, that's what I'd like to be doing. I'd really, you know, I'd love that. I'd love for that to be what I'm doing. But I know that right now, number one, I have my current employer to thank because trust me, doing all this stuff. You know, it's th being this involved as I am has frustrated my boss once or twice or three times or four, maybe, maybe a little more, you know, and he's gotten frustrated because of some aspect of what I do here um, and how it translated into something else. And, and so he's been very, very understanding and patient with me. So I have a, ver I have an extreme amount of loyalty to my current boss. So, but. That being said, ultimately, yes, one day, if, if I, you know, once I start getting more school and all that stuff and I can actually make this an actual, you know, full-time thing where it could actually, you know, be, where it could actually work and be stable, then I, that would be the ultimate goal. But I have a lot of work to do before it gets to that point. So, and I know that. So, New York, New York. All right. Manitowakery. <laughs> My husband thought I was sleeping. Thought I was Skyping some random guy. <laughs> oh, I get to be Sancho tonight. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> cool beans. Uh, not SP far. Let's see. Not SP far for me. Tip Nova Scotia here. 45 minute plane ride. Loyalty is an admirable character trait. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you know, like I said, he's been very cool. And, uh, you know, when I came to work for him, I was I was in pretty rough state. I'll put it that way. Uh, when I came to work for him and, and uh, you know, he took me under his wing. He's been very helpful to me. He, you know, he's helped me kind of, you know, by giving a just basically giving a crap about me at a time when when maybe a lot of people weren't and give me a chance and so he's helped me become a better person he's helped me learn to become a better person and want to be a better person he's he's a good guy and he deserves my respect and so yeah i don't want to just leave him hanging but the fact of the matter is is that yes i am very eager to be able to make this like what i do full time and i would be absolutely tickled uh, to eventually say maybe five or ten years down the road if that was what I was doing that would be freaking awesome so but I have no I have no you know I, I'm not you know I know that I know that I'm not there yet I'm not I'm not at that point yet there's 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 a there's a bit more road that I gotta go down uh, before I can get to that point uh, namely a lot of school 
needs to happen. Uh, so yeah. Raul, Raul. Good night, Joy. You can get there, man. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm, you know, people already respond to my genuine honesty, so that's already working for me, you know. And if I just keep adding more tools to the to the tool chest, it's just a matter of time. So, anyways, I think that's about it for tonight, folks. Lots of people are saying good night and getting tired here. It looks like. So, let's see. Where is that? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah, so everybody starts somewhere. Absolutely. If you're being 50 and retired has its perks. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so yeah, so I think, uh, you know, we're over two hours. We're at two hours and 10 minutes. Got to spend a lot of time with you guys tonight. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you, uh, everybody for buying me a Stella. I love it. I love spending time here with you guys. I love talking to you guys. I love answering your questions and helping you try to come and come to grips with all everything about this case. I love it all. I love all the, you know, that you guys are all here and show up and are excited to be here and, and talk about the case. It's just, it's, 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 this is the type of thing that I always really wanted to see when it comes to this case. People excited to dig in and learn and, and, and prepare themselves with the facts so that when people in the wider world ask them about the case, they're informed and, and, and they make sense. So that's the whole goal here is that I wanted to keep people informed. So thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> for that. I know now everybody's making fun of me in the comments, but that's fine. The fact of the matter is, is that I have had, I, in my sober mind, I have thought about saying these things, you know, the last week, but I didn't. So probably better you guys bought me a beer so that it, it, it knocked out the macho and it allowed me to let that stuff slip out. <laughs> uh, Marvel Olympics uh, on YouTube. Check it out. Okay. Um, good times. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Okay. So that's it, everybody. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And this is a slightly buzzed Eric signing off.